iProjection is the free software solution from Epson that allows users to display wirelessly from an iOS device. If you have not already watched the iProjection overview video in this series, I would advise you start there to learn about the iProjection requirements before watching this video. What we will cover in this video are some of the most valuable features available within the iProjection app. We do not cover all the features. If after watching this video, you would like to learn more about the additional feature sets of iProjection, there is built-in support within the app where you can find information on all of the functions. If you do not have the iProjection app, please go to the Apple Store where you can download it for free. The iProjection app works with iPads and iPhones. For this video, I'll be using an iPad since it has a large, easy to read screen. Before starting, I want to explain the different ways you can display from iProjection. While iProjection will allow you to connect directly to the projector bypassing the network, I suggest connecting to the projector that is attached to a network. Here's why. When you connect directly from the iPad to the projector, the Wi-Fi function of the iPad is consumed. As such, you will not be able to connect to the internet or access any online content when it is connected this way. If you do not show online content, then there's no problem. However, if you connect your iPad and your projector over the network, the iPad will still have access to the internet through your router. Since this is preferable, I will demonstrate it this way. So let's get started. You have your iPad and the iProjection app is already installed. Here, you see my Epson projector, which is attached to my local network named LPA138. To get started, I first must connect my iPad to the network that the projector resides on. To do this, just follow the same steps you use whenever you connect to your network. Once connected to your network, you need to open the iProjection app on the iPad to establish the connection between the iPad and the projector. When you open the iProjection application, you will be able to see the projectors that reside on your network. For this reason, when putting your projectors on the network, you should name them in a way that makes them easily identifiable. Good examples of naming would be Classroom 6, as opposed to Epson Projector, which could easily become confused among other projectors on the network. In this case, I will connect to the projector on my network called Brightlink 735FI. Before establishing the connection, I can click on the three lines icon on the upper left side of the app, which brings up a menu including iProjection settings. If I click on settings, I see a list of items where I can choose my user preferences. I can choose a name for my device or select other various settings related to the image quality, audio features, and more. So quickly, I will name my device and select Reset Profile. Once done, I go back to the main screen. From here, I click on the three dots icon in the upper right corner of the app. Here it gives me the option of connecting as the moderator. We will explain more about moderator in a bit, but this would typically be the preferred selection for someone that is displaying and wishes to be able to control the connection and display of other devices in the room. I will choose Connect as Moderator and then click on the projector I wish to display to. With that, I am joined to the projector and am ready to share my display. Here I have several options to choose from. I can select to Mirror Device Screen, which will allow me to show any screen as I navigate through my iPad or iPhone. So anything that is on my iOS device screen will be displayed. If you wish to limit what is displayed, you can choose from photos, documents, or web page to limit your display to just those items. You can also choose to manage multiple connected devices here under the multi-device projection icon. For now, I will just mirror my own screen to the display. I select the mirror screen device. Here I am prompted to broadcast my screen and when prompted, select I projection from the submenu, and then start broadcast. 
As you can see, at this time my iPad is displaying to the projector. As I scroll through my home screen, you can see that the display on the projector also changes. If I want to show web content, I open my browser. Or if I want to show a video, I can navigate to YouTube and display a video. It's that easy. Additionally, I can display photos, documents, even a built-in browser. To do this, I select the web page from the contents menu. At the top, I can key in the site I want to visit. Now that the web page is displayed on the projector, if I wish to allow others to connect to the projector and display, I can manage that by going back to the iProjection app and selecting multi-device projection. I select multi-device projection and I can see the moderator icon at the top from when I originally started the session. Once I am connected, you will see the iProjection control screen on your iPad. Since I am the only one connected, only my device shows in the list of connected devices. As other devices connect to the network and the projector using the iProjection app, they appear on the left-hand side of my display. When I wish to show someone else's screen, I click on their name. If I want to preview their content before displaying, I can click on the thumbnail button. You will notice there is a display matrix on my iPad. You can see the display matrix is divided into four quadrants. This is because as the moderator using an iOS device, I can choose to display up to four devices simultaneously. To do so, I select the side-by-side -side display to show two devices, or the four-up display to show four devices simultaneously. Next, I select the names of the devices I wish to display, and assign each to a quadrant on the eye projection display matrix. Once they are all displayed, I can choose to move the location of the connected devices by selecting the desired location on the matrix and then tapping on the device I wish to display. Because iProjection supports connections from PC, Mac, iOS, Android, and Chrome devices, I can manage displays from any of these connected devices using the moderator function. Here I am showing four devices simultaneously, including the content from my iPad. In order to mirror your iOS device while using multi-device projection, you must follow this sequence. Go to the three bars icon in the upper left and select Mirror Device Screen. With that, you'll see a dialog box confirming that you wish to broadcast your full screen. Click on the button that reads Start Mirroring, then I Projection, and Start Broadcast. With that, your screen will appear along with the other devices you have chosen to display. If you wish to go back to the eye projection moderator function, tap the eye projection icon on your device to return to the dialog box. As you do this, the display from your iOS device will go to black on the projected image. This is normal as eye projection cannot display itself. Next, tap on the multi-device projection button to return to the moderator view where you will see the display matrix and other connected devices on the left-hand side of the window. As I mentioned earlier, one of the capabilities I have available when connected as a moderator is to share the projected display to connected users. To be clear, the image that is shared is that of the projector. The projector collects a quick screen capture and then sends it to the other connected devices in the session. It is not sending my iPad screen to the other devices. To use this feature with an iOS device, I first display from my iPad. I do that by selecting the project button at the top, which will return the display to my screen only. From here, if I wish to share my image to connected devices, I tap the three dots icon in the upper right of the screen and select share image. Then project image. The image that was on the projector is now captured and sent to the other connected devices. If the connected devices in the session are PC or Mac computers, the recipients can use 
Epson Easy Interactive Tool software to annotate on the content they have received. Easy Interactive Tools is a free application available for PC and Mac computers and can be downloaded from the product support pages for any of the Epson Brightlink interactive projectors. If the connected devices are Android, Chrome, or iOS, there are built-in annotation tools within the respective eye projection app. They can use these tools to annotate on the received content. After having annotated on the content, the iPad moderator can click on the refresh button at the top to see the updated images from the connected devices. As long as the thumbnails box is selected on the upper right of the display, the iPad user can see the connected devices along with the annotations that were made by other connected users. You can click on any of the displayed thumbnails to see the annotated content from the other devices, which can then be shared with those in the room up on the big display. At any time, if you wish to cease being the moderator, you can tap the three dots icon in the upper right and select Quit Moderator. This will allow one of the other connected devices to become the moderator. In a similar way, if you wish to end the eye projection session, you simply click on the three bars icon on the left to display the eye projection menu and select Disconnect. As mentioned at the start, this video is intended to provide guidance on how to get up and running on eye projection for iOS devices. To learn more, you can use the built-in help function of the iProjection app or visit the iProjection homepage at epson.com forward slash iProjection. Thanks for joining us today and thank you for choosing Epson.